it's interesting when I talk to my non-scientist friends and they're asking me how I'm going and after I speak to them there have been more than one occasion where people have said oh, you obviously really love your job because when you talk about it you have a smile on your face and I think that's that says it all. I have some very early childhood memories of, of visiting the public aquarium in Singapore where I grew up and at the age of six the family decided to migrate to Australia. We migrated to, to Canberra and my parents opened up a restaurant business. They didn't have, have fish, <laughs> yeah which is probably fortunate. As a kid I was a mad collector of all kinds of different things. I, I had lots of aquaria sitting around the house with all kinds of tropical fish and I had orchids and I had carnivorous plants and I had a, a fossil collection and I had bonsais and cacti and succulents. And I guess the common theme there is that um, every aspect of those collections revolved around nature and the natural world. So I think it was only inevitable that I would uh, end up becoming a, a biologist. Having a background in science does inform the way I look at the world around me. So when I'm walking in the bush and I see some interesting behaviour or I see some weird plant, I might be asking myself a whole range of different scientific questions. But at the same time, I have really diverse interests. I, I really like art, for example. But even then, I think the science creeps through. Like, sometimes when I'm talking to gallerists and they say, oh, you've got a really good sense of observation, and I think that comes from being a, a scientist. You're always looking at things and, and trying to, to analyse things and, and, and observe things. The concept of evolution, I think, underpins all aspects of biology, so it's quite important. In terms of my own research, I guess, sometimes when I tell people that I work on, on sexual selection, they give me a, a funny look. I think there's a growing appreciation now that reproductive behaviours, because it can have implications for the number and the quality of offspring that are produced, can have really important ecological and evolutionary consequences. And of course, with, with an increasingly human-dominated world, I think we really need to understand how uh, animals might be able to adapt to their environment and adaptation that ultimately is due to evolution. So I think that's really important. At the moment, uh, I'm doing quite a bit of research on these desert fish called desert gobies, and they're native to the Lake Eyre Basin of Central Australia. I kind of think of them as the quintessential Aussie battler. So here are these tiny little fish living in the middle of, of nowhere in the desert, and they're able to survive and, and, and in fact thrive. It's within that environment that the males establish territories and they try and court females and then after spawning the males will then look after the babies and, and to show that level of, of commitment to reproduction and, and to parental care, um, you know, I was immediately drawn to these animals to find out a bit more about them. One of the downsides of being a mad collector of various things is that when you move interstate for your job, you tend to leave a lot of these things back at your parents' place. So even now, my mum and dad are constantly nagging me as to when I'm going to bring my collection of, of fossils and plants and fish tanks down to Melbourne. Are they still feeding the fish? Yeah, they're still feeding the fish. <laughs>